Welcome back guys to Trails of Cold Steel where you've joined me back in the save menu because last episode we just finished chapter 6 and with story ever developing massive battles against V and C ending it all with an explosive little finale we move onwards to our next chapter back to Trista and school festival as we load the game up. It's a weird point to start an episode from isn't it? But obviously voice scenes about to happen. In the following weeks, it was hard to tell how much the Empire situation was shifting, but one thing was certain. Changes were happening. With the death of their ringleaders, the Imperial Liberation Front's campaign of terror was finally over. And in recognition of our actions in Ruhr and at Corellia Fortress, all of us in Class 7 were invited to Valflame Palace. There, we were granted the honor of an audience with His Majesty the Emperor, Eugen III, along with Empress Priscilla, the mother of Princess Alfin and Crown Prince Cedric. But no sooner had we been thanked than we came face to face with the leaders of the factions that divided the nation. The heads of the four great houses who rule their vast provinces with absolute authority, and the Chancellor and his close ally, Governor Regnitz, who brought reforms to Heimdall and expanded the railways. Both sides were quick to offer us words of praise, but just as quickly turned to criticize each other's role in the crisis. Eventually, His Majesty was forced to step in and rebuke both sides, clearly disgusted by their behavior. As it stood, the terrorists' defeat made it difficult for their supposed supporters in the noble faction to act openly while Crossbell's push for independence was causing enough of a stir over there to keep the reformists busy. With both sides tied up, it looked like the Empire was in for a long overdue respite from its perpetual conflict. We'd finally gotten all the details for our concert performance worked out, and Elliot announced that we'd be doing two songs, a duet between Machias and Eusis, and a solo by Emma. To no one's surprise, all three of them were quick to raise objections. But after Crow and Elliot explained their choices, and how their master plan would win over the audience, the rest of the class was totally on board, leaving our new vocalists to resign themselves to the inevitable. Unfortunately, with the good times came some sad news as well. It turned out that Marquis Rogner was furious at Angelica for her part in what we did at the mine, and as a result, she was forced to leave the academy. Contrary to the official statement, her withdrawal was to be permanent. Before she left, she asked me if I'd look after the Orbal bike for her. At first, I didn't want to. It felt like I'd be accepting that she'd be gone. But after thinking it over, I finally agreed. With so much going on, we decided to take Prince Oliver up on his proposal of a brief vacation north in Ymir. It proved to be quite an eventful trip and it really drove home just how much we'd come to mean to each other. I'd tell you all about it, but we'd be here for hours. Maybe another time. If I'm right in saying, there's a drama CD for that. Anyway. And so we move forward. How many days? Quite a long time. Almost a full month. Festival prep, day one. Could I have your attention, please? It's another great day. Perfect weather to start bringing all your great festival ideas to light. Some of you have been preparing since last month, and some even longer. I know you're all itching to get started. So without further ado, I hereby declare the first day of festival preparation begun. Time to start setting up! We have today and tomorrow, but try not to leave any work until tomorrow night unless you really have to. Alright everyone, let's do this and stay safe out there! I just let the crowd noises take over there. Alright then, back to school, back to setting up, is there harmony, the class is mixing together well still, 
Some would call this the innocence of youth, while everything above their heads is going crazy. I want to thank you for all the effort you put in over these last two weeks, everyone. Well, these things are really coming together now. It's been an exhausting two weeks, though. You said it. I don't think I realised how much work this would involve. Elliot's a merciless taskmaster when it comes to music. <laughs> it's like he unleashes the beast within. S sorry, I just really want this performance to be the best it can be. <laughs> don't worry about it. Given the short time we've had to prepare, I shudder to think what our band would sound like without your guidance. Yeah, I'm sure it'll sound great. <laughs> it's for your backing singer, though. <sighs> well, the songs are coming together quite nicely, I admit. We aren't seriously going to do that, are we? Come on, give it up already. <laughs> Emma's song is really sounding great. Agreed, I'm sure you'll be quite the sight on stage once you're in your outfit. Boys will be all under your spell. <laughs> you guys! That's not the kind of pressure I need right now. I have to say, I'm pleasantly surprised at Machius and Eusis. Who knew they'd work so perfectly together? Everyone! And to think, at the outset, I doubted they had it in them to actually cooperate. Yep, now look at them, crooning together in perfect harmony. But, but that's the worst part! <laughs> Onwards. Speak for yourself! I've never felt so humiliated in my life! <laughs> Thank you for the sub, FST. Sounds like you're all having such a gosh darn good time, I almost hate to interrupt. Just wanted to let you know that the principal's given you permission to use the old schoolhouse. You're all free to use it for rehearsal or whatever you need all the way through the end of tomorrow. R really? Phew, that's a weight off our shoulders. There's only so much of our performance we can practice in the music room's limited space. Yeah, class one's been hogging the auditorium all to themselves. Well, considering they're performing an operetta, I'm not sure where else they could practice. The first floor of the old schoolhouse should be the fine makeshift auditorium as far as our practice needs go. It's even got that stage area. What more could we ask for? Sounds like a great solution to me. Though every time I step through those doors, I'm always reminded of our first day in school. <laughs> first of many deceptions by a certain instructor. I'm afraid the statute of limitations has expired on that one. You know, a little bird told me two people who might be in this room right now had a rather intimate experience that day. Ooh, ooh, tell me! Well, it's nothing worth mentioning. How do you find out about that anyway? <laughs> well, should we go our separate ways for today then? Yeah, our costumes should be coming in this evening. So I think we're fine spending today helping the setup and decorations. Might as well pitch in while we can. I'm guessing tomorrow's schedule just has a rehearsal written in every blank. True, it only seems right to spend today helping out our club members. Guess we order. Were you planning on helping Toa with any last minute student council stuff, Reen? Yeah, the student council's been totally swamped these last few days, so I figured I'd lend my hand. I was thinking of looking in on the old school households out making the rounds too. That'd be helpful. Even though we'll just be using the first floor, we should make sure nothing has shifted around in there. If you're going to make a sweep of the place, just bring me on my Arcus. I'll be happy to tag along. Okay, thanks. Sounds like you've got a lot on your plates. All I can say is good luck. I'll probably be patrolling the campus, so just let me know if anything happens. I'll give you guys a call when the costumes come in. I really want us to at least try those on today, just to make sure they all fit. Bet you do, Crow. I want to see Machias and Eustace's. If you wouldn't mind taking care of this stuff for me, I'd really appreciate it. No problem. Glad to help out. Wait, we got tasks? This is our free day? Okay, so we not got, a, like, a day before our free day. We are on the free day, kind of. Alright, slip their minds. We read the comments. Do we read the comments? Do we? And Mel mix up. <laughs> our class received a package that clearly wasn't meant for us. We want to get it to whichever class ordered it, but we're too swamped with our preparations to ask around. 
Could someone please deliver this for us? We'll be outside Class 2's second year classroom for paying for the festival. Please come see us if you can help. Bridget of Year 1 Class 2. What's up next? Radio Trista. We're doing a special feature here at Radio Trista on the Academy Festival, but we're running a little short on comments. Anyone want to collect the ones we need for me? For more specifics, come see me in the Radio Trista building. Michael, director of Radio Trista. That sounds like I should head there first then if I'm delivering or getting comments around the place. Slip their minds. A number of students have yet to collect their permission slips to serve food and drinks at the festival. Given that it's imperative that everyone doing so has a slip, I need them delivered today. For more in details, speak to me in the infirmary. Right, well, that seems to be the first one to go and test. But of course, we've got to go check everything out anyway, haven't we? Hmm, I figure they'll probably all be related to the festival in some way. Shops and Tristan do seem pretty keen on helping out, though. That's nice of them. Yeah, they do every year. The radio station is even doing a little something for us, too. Alright, I'll see what I can do to keep the ball rolling in town, then. Great, that'll be a big help. Oh, but remember not to neglect your concert practice, okay? Crow's been telling me about it. Sounds like you guys are really pulling out all the stops. That's the idea, yeah, but we haven't started group rehearsals yet. Wait, how many days is it left to the festival and they haven't even rehearsed? Most of us have family coming in to watch, though, so for better or worse, we're going to give it all we've got. By the way, do you think Angelica will be able to make it? Well... Sorry, I guess it's not looking too hopeful, huh? I just don't know. I've tried calling the Marquise's health hold, but they won't even let me talk to her. Still, this is Angie. I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. I reckon she'll just bust through the gate and show up anyway. Don't worry, Angie would never break a promise. Besides, you guys are all here. Crow's here, George is here. I'm sure she'll be here too. That's why we need to make this festival a big success. I want Angie to forget the bad times for a little while and have fun. And I know your concert will be part of that too. When you put it like that, I want to do whatever I can to make it a good time for her. Besides, it's your follow-up act. We'd look bad if they were cheering just as loud for us. <laughs> I can't wait to see what you guys have in store. Toa! Sorry to butt in, but it looks like some of the materials we ordered are going to get here late. If we don't do something, it's going to throw a hitch into our preparations. Okay, I'll take another look at the schedule and see if we can rearrange things a bit. Sorry, Irene, but it looks like Judy calls. Good luck preparing for your concert. Thanks. Well, no sense in just standing around here. We've got a lot to do and less time than I'd like to do it. Our outfits are going to show up this evening too. I'll have to try and get as much as I can finished up before then. Okay, let's get going. And so it comes to scout the entire land once again. How many people are all around the place at this point in time? Wait, why is that quest there? So we're supposed to go to Radio Trista and inside the school. There's another quest just literally on the map right now. Okay, let's go around there, first of all, then. The other thing I need to do is fish. Because there's a fish that we may have missed. Oh, hello, Vice Prince. Vice Prince makes you sound way too more important. No, Vice Principal. Hmm, I'm certain I dropped it somewhere around here. Is something the matter? Nothing, nothing I say. <laughs> For that matter, what are you doing here when you have preparation to make the vessel? Get back to work. Normally I would, but you look as though you have something on your mind. Are you sure it can't be of assistance? Th this is a personal matter, and you butting into my private affairs will do more harm than good. Oh, since you're here, it couldn't hurt to ask. Have you seen a notebook around this area by any chance? It would have a black leather cover. I don't believe I've seen anything like that. I'd be happy to help you look, though. Th that is quite unnecessary. But if you are so inspired to assist me, you may do so by forgetting that this conversation ever took place. Understood? This missing notebook has him even more on edge than usual. I probably shouldn't talk to him. I said I'm sure he'd be happy if I found that notebook. I need some clues before I can do that, though. Alright, duly notice has been started. So now we have an extra, extra quest. Oh, it is the final chapter then? Yeah, I knew it. Not just from the achievement list, but... <laughs> seeing there's one space left on the achievements going, Oh, there's six, and then there's one underneath and none under that. Hmm. So now we have an extra one. Be easier if I knew where to start. Hmm, must have dropped it while making my rounds. Aha, the rooftop's the only place to make sense. Hmm, but then it should be around here. Wait, so we seriously dropped it off the roof? Maybe I can figure out where it might be if I head up there. Okay, on the roof. 
You doing a flower store? We'll be selling our freshly grown herbs and even seeds if you'd like to grow your own. I can hardly wait to show off everything we've raised here. I should put together some flashy eye-catching signs too. Maybe you should. Late Law's not here. Alright, we've got five fishing chats with a Late Lord star. Let's get to work. That's not a new fish, damn it. I mean, it's not even a fish. That could be the major clue. So technically, I should be able to catch up on any fish I've missed in there. In here. What even is this? That's the goal, right? 100 CP, huh. though. Maybe save? I've got loads of bait. I think we're at, like, 8 bait at the moment. Come on, Golden Fishy. Give me the Sepith Mass that I desire. Catch. I thought Sepith Mass you gave me. Obviously, I'm completely wrong. But yeah, I have 10 ground bait, so. <gasps> 45 minutes of fishing hype. <laughs> this is definitely it. This is the one. Definitely never seen one of these before. Could be completely lying. Cop, cop. How long will I be fishing? <laughs> well, at least we'll be getting loads of fishing points, I guess. What even is this? Not good luck at the moment. This isn't the way to start off. I mean, I didn't miss this fish, but I never saw another fishing spot anywhere. Oh, cut. Can't we just let it go away and try to pick it up with another one? I've never actually lost those, so I don't really want to, do I? Krasik, thank you for the 24-month sub. Not bad. Oh, that's not going well for me. Now, the ground bait only gives us three charges, of course. But I've got loads of it. What the hell is with all these cops? Maybe it's in the other stream. Maybe it's in the other one. Caught one. Didn't even give me enough points to level me up if I can level again. Oh, silly crap. I want to know who puts all these fish in here Caught one. to get the catch-up fish huh. in the first place. Damn it! We are going to be here. You blame female student, do you? Oh no! That's a catch. I mean, I've got all the CP I could ever need right now. Huh. But this isn't going well. I'd have thought the late Lord Star would be able to get it. Oh, that's that's it! Found it! Look at it, it's got a weird golden border. That's definitely new! Right, that didn't take us too long. Invisible crayfish. This? New catch, 100 points. 18 points. Types caught 19. It's not that invisible if I caught it. I guess I better use up my remaining two charges now. See, look, I'm not. It's not that long. It's only about five minutes, maybe. I better use up my fish now. And even those points haven't got me any, like, much more points. It's not that bad. It's not that long to get it. Let's use up my last charge. At least it wasn't another pearl glass incident back in Trails in the Sky. You are right. The pearl glass incident is a hated incident. Well, what the hell? I wasn't getting in very well. I think I've actually spammed buttons so much now that my hands are actually tired. <laughs> 
There we go. Eleven fish. What even is reaped this? from that pond? I've got so many points. I've still got eight ground bait left. So now it's about where to find the last one on the list. Our fishing list is looking great. A large crustacean looks like it's been frozen in ice. It's an S rank, which is probably why it's got that border. It's extremely difficult to spike water, perhaps due to the water separate in its body. As a result, despite its large size, barely any have ever been caught. Well, I'll have you know, I've caught one. Because I'm a master fisherman. Right, well, before we continue onwards, let's zoop over to Trista, to Radio Trista. Oh, there's no bonding points. Oh, just, now we're in here. Got to check if there's a cat upstairs, you know. I thought that was... <laughs> Governor Reg... No, it's not. <laughs> I know a student here who is something in or store for the Academy Festival. However, he refuses to tell me exactly what that is. As you might expect, this worries me. So I decided to observe him myself. Perhaps this is what it feels like to be a parent. Indeed, Secretary Bills. What are you doing in this room? I'd like to go to the Academy Festival one day. We're always too busy whenever it's going on to go ourselves, though. That's just the fate all waitresses are doomed to, I suppose. Indeed. Cosbell is reeling from a terrifying terrorist attack right now. Apparently support for independence is on the rise over there due to the sheer number of victims too. Feels like there's been nothing but bad news lately. And I'm afraid that things are only getting worse. Yeah, it looks like everyone's almost done with the festival setup. Just don't get all excited about finishing up and forget to take a break. Last thing I want is for you to get burned out before the thing even starts. It'd be a pity if you couldn't enjoy it. Oh, that's another quest. That's another fort as we start off our day. Three whole recipes that I still don't have. Three recipes. I checked the bookshop. Maybe there's one there, to be honest. We found a few there. So we're one fish and three recipes away. Glad to keep you away, Michael. Oh, there you are. I'm just glad you can make it at all. Our special's tonight, but some people still haven't submitted what they want us to say during it. I mean, we could go ahead without them, but it'd feel kind of unfair if we did. <laughs> I imagine it probably just slipped their minds considering how much everyone has to do right now. But you are taking the time to give everyone's events coverage, so I'm sorry that they put you through this. Ah, don't sweat it. The festival gives us some good material every year. You won't see me complaining that the students are making it better. The Academy's been getting lots of coverage ever since what happened last month, too. Ah, sorry, we don't have the time to shoot the breeze about that. So you got the time to get this done? I do. You bet. You'll be broadcasting tonight, so let's get this done as quickly as possible. You are the man. I'm still waiting on replies from Class 1, Class 5, and the Occult Research Society. I don't know where the people in charge of them are, but you probably will since you're all from the same academy. Go get those comments. Leave it to me. Class 1 should still be rehearsed for the Operetta, so that's in the auditorium. So I'm sure that's where I'll find everyone. Class 5's Mishy Panics being set up in the gymnasium. Which leaves the Occult Research Society. Now goes ahead to their clubroom. Right then, let's get going. Mishy Panic, eh? Well, gotta wait months till I get a plushy Mishy. Mishy was very excited to go to the Academy Festival. I overheard her talking about how she'd like to report on it while she walked through sampling all the food stalls. The director suspected that all she wanted was an excuse to eat, though, so we didn't approve it. Sure. Mishy Panic sounds fun. Is anyone doing a haunted house? Uh, the more I think about it, the more I feel like that should have gone to someone else. Now I'm really worried. Huh? What have you done? What has Man in Jumpsuit done? This independence nonsense coming from Crosswell is nothing but talk, I'd say. You can't just gain your independence by tossing a bunch of mirror around. Besides, I hear Crosswell's government is completely incompetent, with the state's politicians arguing all the time. Things will fall through soon enough. You can count on that. Okay. Also, we do have to read a couple of uh, chapters of Red Moon Rose, by the way, as well. We've got two in the bank. Some important work just sprang up, so my dad won't be able to make it to the festival. We were so excited to go together, too. <sighs> oh, well, I suppose I'll just have to tag along with Rosine, then. Yes, keep her away from Asta. I happened to bump into Elisa while I was while out doing some shopping for the Literature Club. No, I'm not shopping for the Literature Club. What are you doing? I don't... What? I, no. Whatever you're shopping for, don't do it. It's going to be corrupted. <laughs> no matter what you look, you can tell that the whole academy is humming with activity right now. Well, that reminds me. How are things coming along with your club's short story collection? I remember last time we talked about it, you mentioned the content was a little... graphic. <laughs> well, no worries. I managed to get that matter all settled. Dorothy agreed to tone the material down to a more... acceptable standard. Ah, she certainly didn't make it easy, though. Sounds like Emma had a work cut out for her. 
Emily and Talisia asked me to go buy some materials for them. Oh, I meant to ask, how did our outfits turn out in the end? They were changed a little bit from the original designs, weren't they? Well, uh, everything's fine. You'll get to see them this evening. What was that? <laughs> With that ominous pause? <laughs> I added an extra pregnant ominous pause. <laughs> Just for effect. Alright, I don't know if I should buy some food stuff at this point or not. I planned on closing up shop when the festival started so I could take Tizel to go see it. But I gotta meet some punk client because they want to do business all of a sudden. Tizel, don't go to the festival on your own and leave me behind! It's not like I know what ingredients I need for any future cooking things I can find. It's so exciting to see all you students running here and there. If you're this busy, then this year's festival is sure to be exciting. Oh, how fun it's going to be. Is that the marker, is it? I'm just wondering if there's a cat anywhere. Fee's after some flowers, eh? I'm bored, so I've been handing out flyers about what the gardening club's doing for the festival. Want one? Nah, you should probably save them for the people in town. I'll be visiting everyone's events during the festival anyway. Hi, Mummy. You're such a good leader. Uh huh. I should go to the festival myself when I find the time. I do need to visit Edel after all. Of course, I also want to see the flowers everyone in the garden clubs work so hard to raise too. It's more about fees, one, isn't it? What's going on with Mitch? Oh, hello, Sarah. There you go. That'll run you 27,800 Mira. Ouch. No repeat customer discounts in your store, are there? This bill better include the information too. Of course it does. Don't want my head off. Sounds like the Red Constellation's still kicking back in Crossbell. It's anyone's guess as to where, though. I can't believe they're still hanging around there after the terrorist attack on that scale. Could you pass that info along to Tobol for me? Sounds like they're discussing the recent terrorist attack in Crossbell. I guess Instructor Sarah are just as stressed about everything going on as we are. It's like the world's falling apart. Is Lebeau just... Peacefully chilling in the meantime. Sounds like your festival preparations are going along really well. Just stay focused on that and leave the grown-up stuff to us adults, okay? Why don't you start rehearsing at the crack of dawn tomorrow, too? Oh, don't, don't you start. Doing too much too fast will burn you out quick, you know. What do you have at the moment, Mitch? Still haven't missed anything since that one recipe. And we have enough to pay our instructor's bill of Sepith Mass. Not bad. Still, when you're looking to trade, I still think, like, most of this stuff isn't too fancy enough. Glam Solarium, getting that. If we could get a second one of that, I could make another one. We got 37 new material at this point. So if I make another one of those courts, I could make a better version. That wouldn't be too bad an idea. It's a rough world we live in. But that's nothing you kids should worry yourself about. Not until life beats you down into a grouchy old man like me. Just forget about it until it hits you. That's the way. Just forget about it until a month before release, right guys? C could it be? It's what ended it by your own beautiful hands. So this is why you've been so secretive lately. Um, oh Harrison, I get to hear your opinion on the sweater itself. I'm so happy, Hannah. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. It's like there's an impenetrable lovey-dovey barrier making it impossible to approach them. Thank you so much, Hannah. I really wasn't expecting this. Looks like this will be keeping me nice and warm during the festival. I worked hard to get it ready in time. Now all that's left is for the three of us to enjoy the festival together. Hey, kiddo. It's great to have loving parents, isn't it? Mummy and Daddy are taking me to the Academy Festival. Daddy's got work, so we can only go for one day, but it's going to be super fun. I wonder what they're going to have there. Lovey dovey parents. Though you'd hope that they had a room that was separate from the kids. For reasons. Seems like the new sister from the church will be taking kids to the festival with her. That's quite the relief for me since I'll be very busy during it. I'm pretty sure Kay would have snuck out and caused some trouble there without anyone to keep an eye on him. Yeah, but Kay's doing things. Oh, what we got? Imperial Chris Chronicle issue 10. And the philosophy of the blade. A book that applies blades philosophies to daily life. Wait, is blades a person? We're not talking about swords? Blades a person? Is it that blade?
All right, Red Moon Rose is waiting to be read. Now I've just realized I need to go to the other bit, but let's look at the Philosophy of the Blade. Oh, Philosophy of Blade the game. Yeah, the card game. Oh, yeah, well, I I don't think this will help me at all. <laughs> I'm terrible at Blade. <laughs> this is a pretty interesting book. Might be worth talking to Crow about. We're getting Link experience with Crow, are we? I don't want to get Link experience with Crow. It just beat me in Blade two seconds again. Ugh. Did I beat him or did I lose? You missed one chapter of Imperial News? No, I didn't, did I? It'd be funny if I did. Ha! I did! Where'd I miss that? <gasps> when did I miss that? When did I not buy that? When was that for sale? Where was that for sale? Oh my god! I'm the worst person ever! Oh no! I mean, the newspaper in this game ain't greatly important when you think about it, he says, trying to deflect now. Reset, start over, big fail. I missed one of Trolls in the Sky, SC after all, we just saved back to get it. Maybe I could do that again. Mitch may have it? No, he doesn't. Not the moment, anyway. Mummy said that the Academy Festival's tons of fun. I want to go! I gotta see how Kenny's doing, too. Plan well, on bringing Mill and Annie to the festival since they're both so excited for it. Fortunately, it doesn't seem as though my husband will be able to join us. I did expect this, though, considering the situation over in Crossbell at the moment. When was that for sale, Because uh, I went to the general store about a billion times. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like I'll be able to get to the festival with all the work I have to do. I hope Melissa and the children can enjoy themselves, at least. Wait, it was in an ex incredibly specific place at an incredibly specific time. Lol. <laughs> Only two days left until the Academy Festival. N not that I'm counting or anything. Pshh. I, 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 like, I'd really be excited for something like that. I, I, I just feel the need to go and see Clyde and thank him for his help. I do now. You just want to go see... If you like someone, you think someone's cool, you want to be friends with someone that's cool, just do it. Hey, late lord. Oh, hey, late lord. What's going on? You're looking awfully serious. Perfect timing, Reen. I saw a shadow in the water that couldn't belong to anything other than Tristus Guardian. Tristus Guardian? I have no idea what that is. Oh, it's a tricky one. A fish so elusive, few people have ever even seen it. That shadow was the first glimpse of it I've seen, but that was enough to tell me he'll be a powerful opponent. But Reen, the fact that you showed up right after a sword is definitely a sign. How about we have a competition to see who can catch it first? Hmm. Sure, let's do this. <laughs> this should be interesting. Oh, yeah. Apparently, it won't even give you the time of day if it doesn't find you worthy. With all the fish you've caught by now, there shouldn't be a problem. Don't know about you, but I'm going to start fishing for the Guardian right away. You might want to do the same. No time like the present, right? <gasps> the Guardian's in here, is it? The final fish. Quick, go down and save on Chapter 5 Save. And we thought the last time fishing took some time. But of course, when you go back to Trister, it's all about talking to people. And seems mainly about fishing at this point. Oh, there's no fishing charge. There's no charges. Well, we've already caught it. Ah! Oh my goodness, it's a bit tougher. No, I think we'll get it. Yeah, come on, come on. Come here. Let's go a very fancy tail. No, come on. Uh, I need the nano probes. Give me the hand of probes now! No! Come get it! Get it. Yeah. Well, that was fast! Wow, this is a big one! It really is. Giant sword tail. A Senin gem was coughed up. I, I did it! I caught the guardian! Amazing! So this is Trista's guardian. It looks kind of like a sword tail, but also kind of different. Man, who'd have thought Trista would be home to a fish this powerful? It was a tough opponent for sure. But you caught it, Reen, and even outdid me in the process. Well done! Now you pulled this off, you've truly earned the right to bear this title. You are now officially a Red Angler, the Imperial Fishing Club's loftiest title. I still have no idea what these titles are for, but there's no way I could have done this without your help, Kenneth. I never would have built up the skills to catch the Guardian if you hadn't given me that fishing rod way back when. And there's the constant support you've given me since... I just can't thank you enough. <laughs> Humble as ever. Alright, almost forgot. Here's your reward for becoming a Red Angler. You've earned it. Vermillion. Master Quartz. This is really too much. Believe me when I said you deserve it, I mean it. Besides, it was cool of you to join me on my challenge when you're so busy. 
Now that you're done, though, let's focus on making the Academy Festival as fun as possible. Right. Do you now trade something cooler now? No new rods. Oh. Another master course is here. Orochi. Randomly increases physical damage. Randomly. Multiplied by maximum 1.8. And magical damage by 1.5. Not just buy anyway. Right, two Master Courses per game during that time. Vermilion has high HP increases physical damage by multiplied by maximum 1.5. HP plus 500 per enemy killed. I mean, I can put it on just to see what arts it has as well, can't I? Oh wait, it doesn't come with any arts? No, it doesn't. You can see it on the thing. Orochi doesn't come with arts either. I mean, I love CP plus 25, thank you. I can't go away from that. I mean, our setups are good enough anyway, but now let's just got even more Master Quartz. Right, supposedly then, I might be able to... keep coming back in and here, out of here to maybe get... Does that work with papers? I didn't even know. Can't exchange curios or anything. Something tells me I'm not going to find it that easily, right? Nothing else to trade for in the other slot. Yeah, to be honest, does, does it work with that kind of thing? Maybe there's another place I can buy it. If I missed it, I missed it though. Oh well. I can't believe I did, but if I did, I did. I'm surprised that I did. Thank you for ordering your outfits for the concert here. They're putting the finishing touches on them over our main branch in Heimdall. They should arrive here this evening, so we ask for your patience until then. Oh, they look like that. Any new gear? Nope. There's some people in here though. Wait, where are they? Oh, they're in the changing room. Hey, Vivi, is there a reason we need to try these on? They're just aprons, really. Of course there is. This is a perfect chance to see how you're growing in the places that matter. The Vivi, how many times do I have to tell you not to touch me there? Well, that's my cue to exit. Vivi, dummy, stop messing around so we get this done. Oh, oh, oh. Is that a little extra weight I see, Lind? You're feeling a little bit plump right around these areas. I, I told you to stop filling me up. No more conversation dialogue. I knew there'd be a second dialogue for that one. We'll just wait in here. <laughs> we won't. Just want to get your sister in an apron so you can check her out. It's weird. I'm going to spend the whole festival of Rosie. <laughs> I'm so excited I can't even sleep. Oh, I'm going to spend... Yeah, I know you are, you weirdo. <laughs> well, let's just ignore Kay for now and get excited for the festival. It's the biggest event in Trista, and it only happens once a year, so we've got to make it go all out and make it count. There's not always a second dialogue. I've definitely talked to people where they haven't been. Mm -hmm. Even though you'll be busy leading the children around, don't forget to have a little fun for yourself. This is your first Academy Festival, after all. Thank you, Sister Ornello, I will. Usually when there's multiple conversation like this, there's always a second one. I hear there'll be two stage performances this year. Hopefully, Rosie and the children enjoy themselves. Sister Ornella was curious about the festival, so I brought along a pamphlet for her. I plan on taking the children along and showing them around myself. I look forward to seeing how they react to everything. I want to see how they react when I rock out. I see that you're all in high spirits at the approaching Academy Festival. Please do take care not to injure yourselves during your preparations. I'll be praying for your success. And we've nearly covered the entirety of Trista. We can nearly move back into the Academy where there's going to be a hell of a lot of stuff going on, obviously. Probably have one dish to give to you, I think. Red hot soda. We still need to get you three more. We still need to find more food to make. Only one day remains until the start of the festival. 
Preparations for Class 1's operetta are proceeding according to plan. My apologies to Class 7, but my support lies entirely behind Master Patrick in this class. <laughs> no need to apologize, I figured as much. I just want both classes to put on great performances. Okay, able to hear that. I'm sure Master Patrick would be too. I'm gonna beeline straight to finishing at least one quest. Oh yeah, can't go in there. Once we enter the grounds, we're gonna go complete that one we picked up for Radio Trista, first of all. Oh, there's Salim! Do you want some more milk? She seems so happy. Why are you always saying she seems happy when she goes, heh? We'll be serving Eastern tea cakes at our tea house. Only problem is, Colette's in charge of everything. Which is worrying because she's kind of not all there, if you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. My class is doing an event called Gate of Avalon for the festival. It's all about some card game that all the boys like. Hmm, where could that room be? Oh, it's another place for me to lose Blade horribly. I'm putting up flyers for our attraction. I've got to hand them out to the people in town today, too, so it's going to be a busy day. It's another place for me to lose Blade absolutely horrendously. No chance I'm making the comeback. There is zero chance. The archway setup has been going along great. Hm, things really do go more smoothly when you can get the guys to help out. What are they doing normally? Just slacking? We're all trying to make the main entrance nice and fancy, so it's the most important part. Well, most of us are. Vincent over there isn't helping out at all, as usual. I must say, this is shaping up splendidly. And how could it not when I, Vincent Floral, am overseeing the work done upon it? Now, Sarifa, you must set this up as though it were a present of it to Adius herself. It's always a joy to witness the Academy's liveness this time of year. I believe that I would find myself much happier, however, if Master Vincent were to assist with preparations. He's just forcing you to do it, is he? Want to hold on to your happy festival memories? I've got you covered. Snap! That's a smile preserved. Snap! There's hers too. Snap! So snap! I'll immortalize every cute smile I see. What about my cute smile? Apparently the fact that there are guys at this festival isn't a memory worth preserving. Exactly. You sexist! I play first, Becky. So I'm afraid you'll have to hand the main gate over to me. Uh-oh. It's war. She's... <laughs> she, she is... She is Scottish. She will just kick you in the crotch. We'll give you a Glasgow kiss or something. Hey, Hugo, don't even chance it. I'm taking this spot. You can find another spot, you mad rocket. Yeah, you mad rocket. You are a mad rocket. I better get going on the decorations. Some of the materials I need still aren't here yet, though. Maybe I should ask Toa about it when I get a breather. Do you want me to help you find places you haven't put them up yet? I've done that before. Oh, it's you. Ah, the auditorium is reserved for Class 1 students to practice in. They're clearly not Class 1, so I suggest you go elsewhere. Screw you. I mean, the sexist comment isn't wrong, just for a different reason. <laughs> yeah. Just for the not good. Well, never. that claim never is good, but whatever. Our stage design is simply fabulous. I wish I wasn't the one who had to break this tube, but there's no question that we will take first the popularity vote. Why does I take it too badly? At least it's rightly sized. Instructor Thomas has provided us with a marvellous script. It would hardly be right to call ourselves nobles if our performance wasn't every bit as elegant and grand as the text itself. And given our natural grace, there was naught to do now but practice, practice, practice. I just saw Patrick go backstage on his own. He's been acting so strangely of late. I wonder if something's the matter. It's almost time for our rehearsal too. I wonder what's wrong. Hmm, maybe I should check on him. We're going backstage. What's up? Ah, that chance there's a textbook example of how crass these commoners really are. That's still no reason to aid the likes of those curs. It seems the noble faction really was backing up the terrorists. I wonder how deeply involved the High Arms family is. Hey, Patrick. Is it Schwartz, sir? What do you want? More importantly, how long have you been there? Not too long. I just wanted to say that uh, I'm very impressed with what I've seen for Class 1's operetta. I mean, I've only seen the stage in your outfits, but they're really elaborate and well done. Are you? As you know, it's the Imperial Nobility's duty to perform anything they put their minds to at the highest level. Speaking of, I hear you're planning some unusual performance with Class 8. 7. Me. Class 8, yes. Do try not to embarrass yourself after our operetta pushes the bar into the sky. <laughs> We're high jumpers. Oh yeah, on an unrelated note, we met your dad at Valplane Palace the other day. It seems you've mistaken me for someone who would care. I'm sure he went on an extended monologue about how he'd love to see his foolish son learn a thing or two from all of you. 
we didn't get quite that much out of him. Marquis High Arms actually seemed very polite in comparison to the other heads of the Four Grey Houses. Though, I'm sure there must be size to him that we didn't see, given his position. Oh, Patrick's moved. Who do we need to speak to in here, then, about the, uh... The quote. Were you there before, or did I just walk straight past you? Excuse me, could I have a moment? What are you doing here? This is Class 1's practice area. Did you see a sign that said Class 7, Interlopers Welcome? Perhaps, please interrupt us. No? Then move along. I'm only here to ask about Class 1's comment for the radio special on the Academy Festival tonight. You still haven't submitted one. Oh, oh right. Did no one submit a comment for our class? I, I certainly haven't. Likewise, we've been so focused on practicing that it slipped our minds. <laughs> Listen well then. Class 1 will be performing an operetta set in the Middle Ages known as the Coronation of Garuda. It is the dramatic tale of Garuda, a most noble lady favoured by the Emperor himself as she struggles against her own destiny. The leading roles will be played to perfection by Patrick Hyams and myself, Ferris Floral. Our operetta won't just be captivating but also educational. We even consulted an expert to ensure our script's accuracy. I implore those of you listening not to miss out on our fabulous performance. Ooh. Especially in order to watch other lesser events performed by other lesser classes the very same day. We will not be topped. I had a hiccup then. I think that I should do for now. Thanks. She really is competitive. Alright, we got our first quote. I can't believe that we all forgot about Radio Tristan's request. R regardless, the people's judgement is based on what they see on stage, not what they hear on the radio, so we're fine. Just try not to be as careless as we were. Uh, are you quite done? We're just about to commence with our final rehearsal. Your interruptions will not be tolerated. What do you think? I'm going to stand at the back and heckle. Had you not butted in, we would have missed our opportunity to spread the word about our spectacular operetta. So, um, you have my thanks, I suppose. But this doesn't change the fact that our performance is going to completely obliterate yours. Well, they've got lower class students in here, by the look of it. Class 1 has been hogging this place for days on end because they're endless rehearsals or whatever they're doing. How are we supposed to get the stage ready if they never get off of it? Ah, it's the student council. Let's see, we needed eight sets of seats for the intersection of the left hand side, I believe. We're very lucky that President Herschel organised these instructions so well. Indeed, you probably are. Anyone up top? There are people as well. More student council members by the look of it. Right, I do believe that takes care of the lighting. Careful setup is key to a memorable performance. Nobody will care what you have to say if you can't find your light. So we've got to do everything we can to make sure everything goes off without a hitch. I don't see any change. What do you mean that takes care of the lighting? You haven't put any lights up, have you? Alright, let's rotate around here towards the gym then. Wait, it is? Time to set up again! What's up? Hold on, this is backwards. Yes. Yes. Very yes. Let's check out the place of Mishy Panic. I heard a great deal about you, Lord. Mm hmm. If you're up for it, I think it might be fun for the two of us to duel. Likewise, I can't think of a swordsman on campus who doesn't know your name. I'm sure the duel will be fun for the both of us. Though I can't imagine a foil for a fencer being able to block that sword. I won't be a part of the fencing club anymore once the festival's over. Regardless, I'm still hoping for a duel with you at some point. Hmm, I've never had much opportunity to talk with you, Paul Friedel. I certainly enjoy the chance for a duel, though. Just don't do it in here, she might ask. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that when I walked through the door. <laughs> Wait, it's basically whack-a-mole? That's interesting. Quit panicking, you guys. We've already sent someone to go grab George, so it's only a matter of time. Come on, work. I command you to work. Mishy, why have you forsaken us? Uh, is everything okay over here? Uh, hey, watch out. This Class 7 joke is here to get the dirt on us. What, you think this is some sort of show? Get out of here, poor mate. Get out of here. Yeah. Sit down, boys. Stop putting on those weird voices, too. Sorry about that. Truth is, the machine we're using isn't really working like it should, so we're all a little on edge. When we sent someone off to get George, though, so our technical woes should be able to too long. What's your story? Do you have a reason for coming? Or are you actually spying on us? 
It's the former, I assure you. I hate to ask when you're busy, but it's about the festival feature on the radio tonight. Class 5 still hasn't provided the station with a comment, so I was hoping that someone could say something. Oh, idiot, this monk. How could that radio freak have forgotten that? Yeah, you're gonna have to ask him. What the heck, man? He seems so excited when he told us to take care of it. What could he even be doing right now? So instead of one of you coming up with a comment on the fly, I need to find Monk. Any idea where he might be at the moment? I don't think any of us have seen him since yesterday, actually. Whatever he's doing right now, but it'd be pretty important if he thinks he can just ditch us at a time like this. You sure he's not just sleeping in? Anyway, none of us have got time to come up with some fancy radio comment. You've got to go straight to Monk for that. Got it. I'll go look for him at the lower class dorm. Hopefully I can actually find him. To the dorm. To the dorm. One night just there. I guess now he's appearing. And at some point in time, we've also got a space out reading Red Moon Rose. So do you think this is time for our first chapter? We haven't really got much done in terms of tasks, but we've got lots of content to get through. Sorry, but the pool's closed off for now. It would really kill the mood if anyone who couldn't swim fell in. Trust me, I emphasize. I would, wouldn't mind a quick dip myself, but I'll resist the urge. Uh, it would really suck if someone fell in the pool. Completely open, easy place to jump in from and what would be more dangerous to fall in from. You know. Just saying. Alright. Let's read a chapter of Red Moon Rose so we get that out of the way. But we still got the Imperial Chronicle 10 to read as well at some point. Alright, so we are on chapter 12. Oh, it's our longest chapter! It's, it's our longest chapter yet. Our longest chapter yet. That one's only 17 pages! The Elder Vampire. Sit back, relax, it's story time. Gerard was Alphonse's superior and the commanding officer of a unit of the Imperial Army responsible for maintaining law and order in Heimdall, widely known as the Gerard team. More than that, he was like a father to Alphonse, as he was the man who had taken him in and raised him after Alphonse had lost his parents. Alphonse knew how hard Gerard had been working to try and catch the culprit behind the vampire murders, and how much anguish he felt at not being able to find any leads as to who the criminal might be, even if he tried not to show it to his subordinates. His desire to help ease that burden on his foster parents was part of the reason that Alphonse was so determined to catch the murderer himself. So what was Gerard doing here in the underground with him? He was supposed to be at the tavern that Elroy had attacked, taking command of the operation. What business could he possibly have here? Alphonse didn't understand. Or rather, he didn't want to understand. Gerard regarded Alphonse with a strange mix of disappointment and affection, like a father looking at his naughty child. Well, I suppose there's a lot to take in for you. He often made the same face when Alphonse addressed him too familiarly while on duty. Everything about Gerard was the same as ever, and he found that very fact deeply disturbing. It was then that he noticed that Luca was standing next to Gerard, her eyes vacant. She didn't seem at all bothered by the carnage all around her. In fact, she didn't even seem to be aware of it at all. Charm, said a weak voice. So then, that means you must be... Returning to his senses, Alphonse looked over in the direction of the voice. It was Rose. She was still lying on the ground. Blood bubbled on her lips from the effort of speaking. It was immediately obvious just from looking at her that the damage she had sustained was lethal. Gerard, seemingly surprised that she was still alive, responded to her unfinished question. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Vampire Hunter. My name is Gerard. I am the elder vampire that you two have been chasing all this time. You seem to have no interest in hiding the truth anymore. T Sir! It was Elroy. Barely clinging to life, he crawled across the ground to Gerard's feet. His clawed hand grasped weakly at Gerard's pant leg as if say trying to cling to him. Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I... Gerard kneeled down and took Elroy's hand. Bending over, he lifted him up like a parent might take a child in their arms. It's alright, Elroy. You did wonderfully in luring that loathsome vampire under the capital. I was right to believe in you. I couldn't have asked for more. Listening to Gerard praise him, Elroy's expression was one of complete peace. And that's why I have no further use for you. Sleep well. The warmth in Gerard's words seemed to drain in an instant. The next moment, a twisted grin emerged on his face, revealing beast-like fangs. No sooner had Alphonse noticed them that they sank into Elroy's neck. Ah! For the first time, Alphonse was forced to witness a vampire drinking blood. Elroy howled out in agony, his screams so piercing that Alphonse wanted to cover his ears to block them out. With agonizing slowness, Gerard drank his blood and by draining him also absorbed the life energy of tens upon tens of innocent human beings that Elroy had killed. All of a sudden, Elroy's formerly youthful body began to shrivel up like a desiccated husk of corn. As his youth evaporated, Gerard's vitality grew exponentially. Black smoke began to pour from the youth's body, hiding it from sight. Elroy's cries grew hoarse and stopped entirely. Finally, his body turned to dust, which fell onto the damp earth of the catacomb. 
The smoke finally cleared, leaving only Gerard. He was now clad in a black coat in place of his army uniform, and instead of the middle-aged man he had been previously, he now appeared to be roughly the same age as Alphonse. A small line of blood trickled from the corner of his mouth. He lapped it up with his tongue, his expression one of pure bliss. He then started to look himself over, taking everything in as if trying to adjust to his new body. The man before him was no longer the Gerard that Alphonse once knew. He was the very image of the vampires that appeared in Erebonian legend. Ah, simply delicious. It's been over a decade since I last had the chance to taste human blood, but it's just as wonderful as I remembered. That was well worth going for that tedious preparation for. He gave a satisfied sigh. Alphonse could only look at him in horrified disbelief. So you were the one who turned Elroy into a vampire? You were the one who made him drink blood just so you could take it all from him? Now, now, God, just... That's not quite true. I'll have you know that Elroy willingly chose to become one of us. Graal placed his hand on his chest in mock solemnity and cast his eyes downwards in a thoroughly exaggerated fashion. Elroy was an orphan. He had lived a poor, lonely life, more so than anyone else I had ever known. But I saw that he was capable of a sword and I invited him into the army, so he came to be dependent on me, just as I thought he would. Gerard wiped an imaginary tear from the corner of his eye. It was as if he saw me as his real father, he added with a laugh. Alphonse shuddered at the sound, chills running through his old body. Eventually, he started to resent you for the fact that I had always raised you like a real son. He wanted to receive that treatment himself, so we tried to find a way to steal that position from you. One day, I decided to reveal my true identity to him and invited him to become a vampire as well. He gladly agreed, hoping that by doing so, he would be able to be more useful to me than you. Hoping that I would favour him more than I did you. As it seems, an anonymous gift has gifted five steps. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. From a short distance away, Rose still lay on the ground, unable to move and frustrated by what she was hearing. In all likelihood, Gerard had given a fraction of his power to Elroy when he had turned him into a vampire. The set of that was the reason that Rose assumed that he was the elder vampire that they were searching for. But she'd been wrong, and if not for a mistake, they wouldn't be in this perilous situation to begin with. For his part, Alphonse was stunned at the revelation that Elroy had held a grudge against him all this time, as well as the reason for it. It wasn't as though Alphonse had done anything wrong himself, or ever tried to hurt Elroy, and he was filled with a deep sense of regret. If only he had realised how Elroy felt earlier, perhaps he could have prevented him from becoming a vampire, and avoided all this happening. Furthermore, he had no choice but to admit to himself that Grab was the true culprit behind all of this, and the man who would manipulate a lonely boy to kill countless people so he didn't have to dirty his own hands. All of a sudden, the fact they'd been unable to stop the vampire murders, no matter how much they strengthened their nighttime patrols, made perfect sense. After all, what chance did they have when the mastermind himself was in charge of organising them? As that truth dawned on him, Alphonse felt a dull, terrible ache in his heart. A thoughtful, hmm, from Gerard brought Alphonse back to things at hand. The vampire licked his lips. Now that my hunger has finally been sated, I suppose all that remains is dessert, he purred. He glanced sideways towards the vacant-eyed Luca with undisguised desire and wrenched his eyes away and focused on the still form of Rose. But before that, he said, suddenly raising his left hand and pointing at her, I think it's about time our dear vampire hunter left the stage for good. Before Alphonse could even react, countless lances of blood like the two that had struck before formed and flew from his palm towards the fallen woman. Alphonse cried out, but could do nothing to stop their flight. Rose saw the danger and reacted. Still lying on the ground, she dropped the pistol that she had secretly been aiming at Garrard, and in the last second used every bit of strength that remained to have her to roll out of the way. She avoided instant death, but it would only be a momentary reprieve if the vampire decided to strike again. Garrard shook his head in amazement. <laughs> you really are a tenacious one, aren't you? And how about you? Stop! Just as Garrard was about to launch his next attack, Alphonse jumped at him. Sword raised, he slashed with everything he could muster. The sword made contact, but aside from a dull ringing sound, it didn't seem to do any actual damage. Oh my, that's no way to show your appreciation to the man who raised you all these years, Garrard said laughing. He flicked his index finger at Alphonse's forehead, causing an unimaginably powerful shockwave, which sent him flying backwards through the air. The silver sword Rose had given him was supposed to be able to kill vampires, and yet it wasn't able to do so much as scratch Garrard. It was then that Alphonse realised what he was up against. A true elder vampire, filled with the life energy of countless humans that Elroy had collected, that he stood no chance whatsoever against. The weight of that understanding filled him with despair. The vampire, meanwhile, seemed to be thinking of something. Oh, I know. While I'm telling you all of this, there is one other little thing that you might be interested to know. Think this was a reward for surviving for so long. Winded from the blow, Alphonse could only gasp. What? He struggled to rise, but he only got as far as kneeling. Gerard looked down at him, a vulgar smile playing in his lips. The one who killed your parents was me. 
Just as Alphonse had thought that nothing else could surprise him, he was proved wrong. Garad's words dragged the sight of his mother and father, all of the blood drained from their bodies, lying dead in their home over ten years ago, up from his memories. Garad continued, seeming to enjoy Alphonse's reaction. There really was a vampire in that village back then. Naturally, I'm referring to me. Your father seemed to realize the first part and set about trying to find out the vampire's identity in secret. This was the first that Alphonse had heard about this. He had no idea that his father had once tried to do exactly what he and Rose had. He was an exceptionally capable soldier, you know, Garad continued. Far too capable to be stuck in a backwater village like that. But that ended up being his undoing. He very nearly succeeded in discovering that it was I whom he was seeking. That's why I killed him with my own hands. Him and his wife who was helping him. Alphonse stumbled to his feet and broke into a lurching charge at Garad. With frenzy slashes and thrusts, he attacked the vampire, almost as if to avoid having to listen to what it was saying. Garad laughed as he batted away the weak blows. The only problem with my plan was you, Al. I had intended to kill you at the same time. You were still a child at the time, but I couldn't allow anyone who might know my true identity to live. And yet when I came to take care of them, you were away from the house. No matter how many times Alphonse hacked at Garad, he could not connect. His silver sword, his fury, his grief, it all seemed meaningless against this foe. Nothing he did could hurt the creature who had taken everything from him. Completely ignoring Alphonse, Garad continued talking. I couldn't very well kill you on a separate occasion either, he sighed. Not with the chance that the vampire hunter I'd heard was skulking about. He might catch wind of it and come after me. Too many strange murders in such a small town like that would be quite suspicious after all. And that's why I decided to keep you close to me. Instead, so that I could keep an eye on you myself. Effectively, it seemed Garal's plan was to make sure that Alphonse never remembered anything that might help him realize the vampire's true identity. If he had, he would have been killed. The man he thought he knew, the man who had cared for him like a father, was a lie. Slowly as the full bitter truth began to sink in, he could feel the hot prickle of tears stinging his eyes. But that won't be necessary anymore. I have no reason to allow you to live any longer. Garad had previously been disregarding all of Alphonse's futile attempts to hurt him, but suddenly he went on the offensive. Lightning quick, he bypassed Alphonse's guard and his fist made contact with the young man's right side. Bones crumpled under the sharp blow and once again, Alphonse was sent flying. He landed hard and was almost immediately up again through sheer force of will. The pain was incredible and something was broken inside him, but it didn't matter. He simply couldn't forgive the man, the creature in front of him, for what he had done. You can't win, Al. You must know that. Just give up and die. This time Garad came to him. His attacks were relentless like water gushing from a broken dam. Again and again his tightly clenched fist pounded Alphonse with the force of a wrecking ball. Unable to defend himself from the onslaught, Alphonse was showered with punches, blood spraying through the air with every strike. Ow! Faintly, he heard Rose call his name. She barely seemed able to maintain consciousness. If he lost here, Rose would be killed for sure. As would Luca. Losing wasn't an option. Being killed wasn't an option. Defeat of any kind wasn't an option considering what was at stake. A sharp pain in his side signaled another bone breaking. Blood dribbled down his lips as he bit back a groan. The more time passed, the closer he was drawing to death's door. Nonetheless, he slowly raised the sword again, swinging it downwards with the last of his strength. As he did, Garad aimed yet another punch at him from directly in front. With a dull metallic sound, the blade snapped in two. The power of the blow was at the top half flying. It flipped end over end and back, clear through Alphonse's right shoulder. It ended impaled into the ground next to where Alrose lay. The moment it sliced through him, it felt as though his strings had been cut as well. He had no more energy left to fight. He couldn't even maintain his grip of the broken sword in his hand. He crumbled to the ground, too exhausted to go on. As he did, another faint memory of the past resurfaced in his mind. During the short period before his parents' murders, there had been a girl who often came to their home who had introduced herself as an acquaintance of his father's. She used to take him out to play practically every day so that he wouldn't disturb his father while he was working. Thinking him back, the work he had been doing must have been investigating the vampire. It was on one of those days that the murders took place. If he had been home with his parents at the time, he would no doubt have been killed alongside them. It was thanks to her taking him out that day that he had been able to live in ignorance for so long and avoid being killed by Garad. He had long forgotten her. Perhaps because his parents' murder had left such a deep scar inside him that all other memories of the period had been pushed into the depths of his subconscious. He found himself wondering how she was doing now, whether she was alright. He hoped she was. These were the idle thoughts that filled him as he lay defeated on the ashen earth, Garad's mocking laughter filling his ears. And now, Al, well, I think it really is time to finish this. Your mother and father are waiting for you up with the goddess. The vampire held the fingers of his right hand straight and rigid, then folded inwards as if performing karate chop. He then swung it downwards towards Alphonse like the blade of a guillotine, aiming directly for his neck. White light suddenly filled the area, obscuring all else. 
At the same time, Alphonse heard the sound of something rending the air. Realizing that he was still alive, he slowly opened his eyes. The hand that had been about to slice through Alphonse's neck now had a gigantic hole at its center. Gerard had his left hand wrapped around his right wrist and was staring at the hole in horror, unable to process what had just happened. The edges of the wound smoked and sizzled. Impossible! Before him stood Rose. Her injuries had been beyond most humans' ability to even survive, yet there she stood, unwavering, a smoking silver pistol in her hand. Her lips were still bright with blood, but her voice was steady. I will not allow you to lay another finger on him. Her eyes blazed with a bright crimson fire. What a long chapter, our longest yet. And we will read the next one relatively soon. Let's go to, was it lower class dorms, wasn't it? And find ourselves a monk.